Uh, Russell, warm welcome to Singapore. Um, uh, we go back a long while when I had less of a forehead. I have a larger <laughs> forehead now uh, on, on something called the World Sailing League, which was the original idea, and then its time has come. Um, but for, for, for those of you, um, Russell's incredibly modest. He's won the America's Cup three times. He pretty much is the Schumacher of, of the sailing world, of the Tiger Woods of the sailing world, or even the Jack Nicholas of the, of the sailing world, I should say. Um, <laughs> But uh, talk us through, I think there's a couple of things really one I want to sort of kick, off, kick us off with. Um, the vision for Sail GP, where did it start? Uh, how's it gone so far and what's next? Yeah, well, um, I think when most people think of sailing, they think of white triangles on a blue background and really Sail GP couldn't be further from that in a way. It's, um, we just uh, had an event in San Tropez a few um, weeks back and the French team reached a speed of 99.94 kilometres per hour on the water. You know, powered again, powered by the wind. So, pretty amazing speeds. And and really, that's that's been the, I think the learning uh, through this is that this is a, 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 a you know we it's developed into the most exciting race on water. That's for sure. And and um, it's now engaging. It's certainly the the racing fan. In a, in a pretty big way, uh, and the general Ford sports fans not not far behind that. So we started off with a sort of avid sailing fan, of course, and and, and now it's migrated into this um, into this much broader property, which is which is exciting. Um, there's also a sense of purpose, which especially in sport, which is not necessarily known for humility or modesty, um, but it's I think it's it's that theme is very well timed in the times we live in, in terms of purpose, sustainability, and where you want to go from here. Yeah, well, that's the, 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 I guess the amazing thing is, is that we really are powered by nature. So the, um, these boats race at four times the wind speed. So as amazing as that sounds, if you, if you set off a helium balloon and you raced it directly downwind, the, these boats would beat it by three and a half times. So, wow. and, and people sort of say, how could that be? You know, they, they think of the wind pushing, pushing it along, but it actually, it actually goes a lot faster than the wind. And, and um, but it's really in our DNA, you know, uh, obviously we're connected deeply with the ocean. And so um, there's that side of it, but really there's been so many opportunities, in, in, even in terms of um, inclusion. You know, so, so we don't just stop with our environmental um, purpose. In terms of making the sport more inclusive, taking it to the fans, bringing it, giving people access, uh, educational pro programs to inspire, um, careers programs to inspire as well, um, a women's pathway program. Because you know, quite frankly and honestly, the sport has a, a still a, a, a problem. You know, it's a, we've got a long way to go to, to achieve uh, gender equity. So, you know, there's, there's a lot of exciting stuff to do and, and uh, a lot of progress. Excellent. Um, we're into season three, um, and I think January, mid-January of next year, CLG becomes to Singapore. It's part of a three-year yeah. program. Uh, it's not an island known for its wins, uh, but obviously, given the way you've designed the boats and the way you actually have the format of the event. Um, how's it going to be similar or different to the Mediterranean where the focus has been so far? Yeah, well, that time of the year, we should get, we should actually get good wind. You know, we obviously researched that. So, so it, 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 uh, it, it should be good. And, and um, yeah, we're really excited to come to Singapore, actually. It's, it's, a, it's going to be our first Asian event. So we started off um, with, uh, what did we start off with? Six teams and five events in season one. We expanded to eight teams and, and uh, no, no, sorry, seven teams and, and, and uh, uh, eight events in season two, and we're now, we're now nine teams and, um, and 11 events in season three. Blimey. And we just announced our season four calendar. We're up to 14 events in season four. So, so it's, been, it's been growing pretty rapidly, and you know, audience-wise, it's growing rapidly as well, so that's yeah. exciting. It's gonna be great to bring it to a new place um, as well, you know, people are always um, really surprised and blown away by just the action and the, I guess, the beauty of, of, of these boats racing along at, at these sort of speeds and, is, uh, you know, people are taken back when they see it for the first time. 
Well, it's fascinating. It's obviously, obviously you know, the, 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 the sailors are miked, and you can see, and there's a very sort of strong gamification of the coverage of the race as well. Uh, it's at multiple layers with graphics and with data and well, video. A, yeah, it's a pro well, the data is, um, uh, you know, uh, is staggering. So each of the boats has got 800 sensors on it. That produces about 3,000 um, data requests a, or outputs a, a second. So each of the boats actually has more than a billion um, data outputs in, in a day of racing, which is, which is incredible. So um, nine, nine teams on the water, that's, that's a fair amount of data. And we decided to put that data in the open. So the teams, for various reasons, but the teams can look at each other's data in real time. And, and uh, so they can get, um, if somebody starts going faster, they, they either the coach or the, or the athletes themselves can actually look at that. And that, of course, speeds up the learning, but it also allows us to tell the insights in a very, very specific way in terms of our broadcast pro product. And also people can access different data outputs on, on our app. So, yeah, that's, that's pretty interesting and pretty innovative, I think, for for sports. When I was reading up on the data and the fact that it's open access and the teams can get it in real time, it almost took me back 30 years ago to the Reuters and the Bloomberg terminal and how yeah. that fundamentally changed yeah. in equity trading, forex, bonds, as the case might be, and it just, it, just, it just led to far more efficiencies and a far larger access in terms of the number of people who are actually in that space. Yeah, well, it, it opens up a whole, even if you look at gaming, for example, and we're just developing our, our, our simulator that we're developing for the, you know, obviously for the um, athlete training, but also design applications and broadcast applications, mm -hmm. all because the data is is in the public sphere. But but one of the reasons, sorry, just taking a step back, one of the reasons we can do that is all the boats are the same. So even though we're constantly improving the performance of the boats. Um, all of the teams get that, those enhancements at the same time. So, uh, you know, when we're looking at something like the simulator that's being developed for, yeah. for, for the teams, um, and you look at gaming applications, we, we designed the simulator so that it would be housed, that the architecture is such that it's housed in the Oracle Cloud. Mm -hmm. And that really opens up a whole lot of possibilities um, to, for, you know, for various entities to access that data. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I, you, you, mentioned, you mentioned Oracle. Talk us through the fly on the wall conversation with Larry Ellison. You know, when you first presented the idea to <laughs> him. Which one? Well, well, you know, you, you pick it. Uh, you know, there was everything from, you know, the, the BMW Oracle challenge to Ben Ainsley coming, to well, you guys he, winning, to this idea. And how did it sort of, it wasn't quite, I, couldn't, I can't imagine it being a quiet afternoon conversation or a cup of coffee. That wouldn't have happened. Well, you know, Larry's, um, Incredibly innovative, and and you know, I mean, all that I've I've been working with him since 2007, and he's always got you know big ideas. You know, right from the early days when we were looking at broadcast and how to make this this sport that's quite complex understandable to the the general sports viewer, yeah, was you know something he was very passionate about, and he he described it a little bit like this. He said, "Look, I I don't want to go to a cartoon." graphic to explain what's going on. I want to superimpose the graphics over the water like they do with the NFL. Mm -hmm. And so we developed that technology and of course that's, that we refer to that as Liveline now. And we're actually applying that to other sports now, which is, which is pretty exciting. When we caught up in London, you also spoke about this whole dual technology piece where you're developing technology for graphics and television, which have a secondary value beyond sailing and beyond sales GP. But you also spoke about marine tech. Yeah. and you know, board design, all that kind of stuff. Talk us through what the enterprise side of sales GP technology well, looks like. Yeah, so we're obviously, oh, maybe not obviously, but producing very, very um, advanced uh, electronics, hydraulics, composites, and so forth. And so we've now started to branch out into uh, aerospace, so almost a third of, uh, of our production is aerospace now. Um, Electronics is, a, is, a, is an area, is some of our um, tracking systems and so forth have, and, and actually use of data mm -hmm. for um, uh, even marine, non-marine applications, commercial shipping for example. Mm -hmm. um, even the monitoring the movement of the ships over the waves and so forth, there hasn't been a lot of uh, 
research in that, but you know, to date. But um, uh, that, of course, is really useful information and can actually uh, uh, quite a few ideas of, of uh, you know, of, 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 of sort of a product of that. So, yeah, there a lot of interesting stuff, and and um, and we're now starting to branch out. You know, certainly in terms of our broadcast production, we were the first to go to a almost a full remote uh, production. So, uh, you know, we started off thinking about um, it in terms of su sustainability, but it's actually been really good for our business as well. Yeah. You know, all of the things that we're doing there, um, I think it's a mistake to, 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 to think that, that they're, it's, a, it's a compromise. If you, if you come to the right solutions, it can be really good for business. So we, we, in the early days, we were flying people all over the world and so forth, quite a large broadcast team. Mm -hmm. And now it's all done out of a studio in London. And so if we're racing a race in Sydney, Australia, for example, the... Um, the, uh, the crew and the... the, the, most, of the most of the broadcast team are in London. So those images are produced they're fired back to London, and then they actually come back to the viewers in Australia. In real time. In, well, there's a couple of seconds delay. Yeah. But it's, um, it's, it's pretty incredible technology. I was funny, I, I, was, I was talking to somebody at Formula One just last week, and they were saying about, I think they visited your offices in London to actually see, because they've gone from 12 to 16 to 19 to 24 events, and you know, the footprint, yeah. the cost, the cost it actually makes business sense. Oh, abs absolutely, yeah, that, no, they were really impressed. Uh, uh, about what, how we were doing that, but 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 then there's other applications for the graphics as well. Um, I won't. Uh, I'd love to talk about it actually, <laughs> but but I better not. So, um, in, in other sports, you know, and you can imagine even when you look at sports betting and so forth, there's some yep. really cool applications coming up. I can see the sort of exciting glint in your eyes. It helps to have won three America's Cups and to have trained as an engineer <laughs> as you have, which is which goes back a long way. I want to take you back in time, and then well, let's go to the future again. Uh, your first America's Cup win. Uh, you just spoke about Saint Tropez and almost 100 kilometers an hour. Talk us through, you know, AC Team New Zealand, Lingi, BMW, Oracle. What were the speeds of the boats? So the audience has oh, an appreciation well, of 15 it's, it's years of how fast it's actually grown. Well, we couldn't have we couldn't have done produced a television product like we do today. So so we're a 90 minute window. We race three. Uh, well, there's a time limit of 16 minutes per, uh, for each race. Yeah. And we raced three, three races in, uh, over a two-day weekend. Now, back back when I was racing, it just looked incredibly slow. It was hard to understand. It was mm. pretty boring, actually. Mm. You know, whereas now it's high speed. It is action. There's, you know, the, 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 when you couple all the um, television images with the sound off the boats and so forth. I mean, even the foils going through the water make a sound. When people hear it for the first time, they say, they say it sounds like a jet engine. And actually, when you look inside the cockpit of these boats, it looks more like an aircraft than a, than a, a, boat. Than, than a sailboat, you know, for sure. So, um, yeah, it's changed a fair bit. That's, that's, that's what I would say. But it's an exciting change. Not quite taking a monohull in an afternoon cruise. <laughs> um, let's no, look it's ahead. Not quite, it's not quite the picture where it's sort of, uh, you're sitting out there with a gin and tonic. It's, 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 uh, it's not be a rickety that. table. Yeah, no, I get that. Um, Let's look ahead. Uh, let's talk about, you know, sort of probably the largest, uh, sort of most far-sighted innovation, which is the whole idea of, of, of you know, de decentralized autonomous organizations and the blockchain and all of that kind of, you know, technology of this decade, which you've ingrained into the structure of not only your, your, your competition, but also your teams. G kick us off in terms of, you know, how the conversation took off. What have been the sort of challenges along the way? Because there have been some fairly serious challenges in terms of regulation, compliance, and stuff. And then, but you, you know, you've, you've gone through and come out successfully. Sure. Yeah. Well, we'll uh, we're obviously um, founded in technology, and so when uh, this whole idea about Web three came along, we were looking for a way to, or, uh, or a partner to come in, and, and, and decided to partner with, um, with. Uh, Near, which is a, a, a highly advanced blockchain company um, and a really sus sustainable one you know, as well. So we decided to partner with them, and, and one of the ideas was to create a DAO team, which, when you, when you think about it, is the 
possibly the ultimate fan engagement platform, mm -hmm. you know, where, where fans actually have uh, an ownership, you know, or a part ownership. And so, because, you know, traditional sports teams are usually funded by uh, wealthy individuals and, and, you know, the fan sort of follows it as a fan, se separate from the actual team. They don't get, they don't get a say in, you know, what the, what's happening with the team and so forth. So, anyway, we were really interested in this, and, but it was, to be honest with you, it was a sort of an idea in the early days, but we've moved from an idea to, to actually a framework to make this happen, and, and, and that, there was a lot of legal work went on. We, we, we have decided that, um, it certainly needed to um, pass uh, scrutiny uh, with the uh, US securities uh, laws Change, and yep. so forth. So, so we, we decided that um, uh, to rewrite our, or, or to allow for a DAO team within our participation agreement rules. And uh, it, we're now at a stage, you know, it's really exciting, we're now at a stage where we've got a proposal. We, we've cert certainly got the legal framework and a proposal from a third party that um, looks like there'll be an announcement within the next month that uh, that, a, that a DAO team will be forming. So yeah, it's, it's, it's really right. exciting. And, and and in actual fact, there has been quite a lot of hurdles there. Um, this it'll be um, it'll allow two types of token holders. One one will be an ownership token, and and, and they that is. Um, they uh, are accredited investors, or they need to be accredited investors under US security um, laws. And also, you know, of course, we have to uh, comply with the, uh, the rules around, uh, you know, um, uh, anti money, uh, laundering, money laundering and, yeah, and KYC, and KYC yeah, yeah. Um, rules and so forth. But, and also the uh, other rules and regulations in other countries. So it's been quite a legal process, but we now have the framework to, to do that. Which is super exciting, and and uh, yeah, it looks like it's you, there'll be some announcements over the next month. Excellent, excellent. We look forward to sort of yeah. hearing more. Um, where does where does sailing go from here? Um, Sail GP as it stands today, but for the name, is very different to the sport you competed in and made a name. Yeah. Do, do you see it as a as a as a as a as a lifestyle brand? Do you see it as an entertainment brand? Do you see it as you know what's what's the vision? What's the 2030 <coughs> vision of Look, where you want to take sales? Yeah, we, we, we're definitely, our audience is growing fast. Mm. You know? And as I said, we didn't, we would never have been able to do this mm. 10 years ago, 15 years ago. We, we quite simply didn't have the product that was exciting enough. Whereas now, we've seen huge audience growth. We grew 220% in season two from comparing that to season one. And then this year, um, our average live or near live audience is, is um, more than double what it was in season two. And that's just growing um, pretty much with every event. Mm. Um, of course, you get, depending on what city you're in, you might get, you might get a, a, a particular spike. But um, it's, it's growing fairly rapidly. And as I said, what we're finding is that that's, that's a much more general audience. Mm -hmm. So people that might know, you know, that know nothing about sailing but are sports fans or, or racing fans, or are just interested in tech or whatever it may be, uh, are switching on and really, you know, starting to follow us, which is which is great. It's super exciting, and you know, next year actually we're we're um, we're also staging our first in our season final in San Francisco. Um, we'll be staging our first uh, live e um, Sail GP as well. So we've we've been racing those races, but not as a live event uh, at the at the venue. So so quite a lot of progression. I, I do wonder when you sleep. I honestly do wonder when you sleep because there's there's so many things going on. You've got so many plates up in the air. Uh, let's take a step back. Leadership on the water with a crew on a boat, vis-a-vis -vis leadership of a very entrepreneurial venture, which is you know, geographically quite diverse. We're almost working through people, much larger team. How do the two compare? Mm. How is it similar? How is it different? Well, I think the work ethic of being, you know, a top sports person is useful, you know, and and uh, you know some of the some of the traits you get from sports, like if you're a top sports person, you know, one of the one of the interesting things that Larry Ellison actually said to me one time when when 
we, I was actually asking him about uh, for some advice around the business, and he said he was talking about a, a bunch of stuff, and he actually came back to me and he said, "You know what?" He said, "Forget all that. The most important thing is to not give up." Mm. And, and you know, of course, you get that, you know, with if you if you you know competing at sports mm. in, at a high level, mm. you you. you, you well, if you don't learn that, you don't make it to the higher level, you know. So, so that's uh, that was, you know, a really good lesson. Hearing that from so, you know something that simple in a way from him was 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 really useful for me. Fascinating. You don't seem like somebody who gives up that easily, which has been the hallmark of your career as well. Um, just before we finish, um, I wanted to play a video uh, about 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 the race. Uh, and then I've got one final question for you. But we can roll the tape first, <laughs> and then I'll let uh, Russell uh, go away. What is Sail GP? It's high speed, high tech, high impact. 11 global events and an intense battle with nine nations. Identical F50 driven by the world's best. And powered by nature. Look at those speeds dipping into 90 kilometers an hour. Competing on a level playing field where both data is shared and talent actually matters. In Australia, they've got to keep clearing New Zealand. Open, open, open. Oh, 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 oh. It's close to shore racing in front of sellout crowds. Join Sail GP in the race for the future, because our race is your race. Fascinating. Very good. Uh, Russell, final, final word. Um, this time next year, uh, how is it going to be different, and how is it going to be similar? Well, there's, you know, I should have said at the beginning that. Uh, oops, oops, that's right. That's not, that's You're good with water. Good. That's fine. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I should have said at the beginning that this was set up, you know, in, in a way, um, a lot like you know, many other sports leagues where you have franchise teams and so forth. So we've been building that out, and 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 so there'll be new teams, including um, the Dow team, uh, new teams and new venues, and we're we're growing quite r rapidly. One, one of the things we we, we want to get to the stage where uh, like you know, a lot of the motorsports properties and so forth, when you look at them, they, they have a certain regularity of their events. So um, we're coming back to Singapore, for example, for the next uh, three, yep. three seasons. A and uh, we'd like to get, um, to expand that broadcast property out so that we end up with 20 plus events a, a, a year. And that really creates the appoint appointment of view because even though you might not know where that uh, you know, if you look at it every, roughly every two weeks, you might not know where that event is, but you know it's on, so, so you can look for it and find it. Yeah. And uh, that'll be the next, I think, the you know, big jump for us when we get to that stage. The critical mass of actually making it sort of work for you whilst you sleep. So, yeah. fascinating. Russell, thank you so much. It's been a, yeah, a, a pleasure and a privilege. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Sir Russell Coots.